So I've seen one of streetcar starts with a quite a long stage direction. Um, and remember the, the street where this is set is called Elysian Fields and I think that's crucial. Um, you know, it's uh, part of the, the, the Greek afterlife basically. Um, and I think a lot of the play could be seen almost as Blanche's purgatory. And I think there's also this element of, of Williams essentially as the play goes on inviting us to decide uh, whether we take a realistic uh, attitude or, or outlook on the play and see Blanche as, as sort of, you know, going mad and Elysian Fields represents the decay of her way of life and the Old South or whether we take a more, I guess, Blanche-like view of the world, less realistic view of the world, in which case we could almost see her as essentially passing on to heaven once this play is gone, uh, once this play is over and going with this this plastic theatre that Williams gives us, going with a, a point of view that isn't quite so realistic, abandoning the real world and, and following Blanche. Um, Williams in that opening direction talks about the tender blue lighting that's almost turquoise, which invests the scene with a kind of lyricism and gracefully attenuates the atmosphere of decay. So there's a beauty to it, but it's a decayed beauty. So straight away, Williams is drawing on this Southern Gothic tradition, this idea of decay, this idea of you know things that have things that have gone. Um, on, on page two, Stanley and Mitch enter about a third of the, the way down the page. Uh, they're dressed in blue denim work clothes. Now, obviously, it's easy to, to stress the, the work clothes and the, the nature of the manual work that they do. I think if we focus on Williams and, and his methods, I think there's a great point to make about structure here because the play begins with Stanley in blue. Right at the end of the play, we get Stella holding a baby in, in a blue uh, blanket. So it starts and ends with this, this clear, you know, primary colour, this, this bright blue colour. Obviously, it connotes masculinity, but I think there's this sense of, of circularity here. We get it in Stella and, and, and Eunice, it's kind of echoing each other, this idea that life in New Orleans is one big circle. Um, and we get it here right at the start, is Stanley, you know, the alpha male, we get Stella's uh, son in, in the blanket, suggesting this will carry on. So if we take that slightly more expressionistic view, the less realistic view, there is an idea that perhaps life in New Orleans, Williams is showing, doesn't really move on and in some ways maybe Blanche uh, has escaped um, rather than, than just gone mad. Um, one really famous stage direction on, on page three, about halfway down, um, Blanche is daintily dressed in a white suit with a fluffy body, so we get you know the white of Blanche versus the blue of Stanley. Those clearly opposing colours. Blanche's innocence, but also that sense of, of purity. We could talk about perhaps the racist uh, links there. You know the, the the white when a lot of the the money that that the old South was was founded upon was was of slavery and of, and of racism. Um, versus you know it's the primary colour, the the blue, the masculinity of Stanley. But we get that line. Her appearance is incongruous to this setting. If we follow this, this Southern Gothic idea, this idea that Williams is gradually taking us into this Southern Gothic way of, of thinking, using plastic theatre to, to make us do it, I think you could argue that Williams, what Williams does is actually, he takes the audience from essentially laughing at Blanche because she's so incongruous, she doesn't fit into this real world, eventually taking the audience with us so, so we follow her slightly less realistic view of the world and so actually we're incongruous to, to New Orleans. Um, the play was first performed in a city, I believe it was, it was New York, to quite a, a cosmopolitan um, audience. Um, but actually I think he's inviting us to, to abandon that realistic outlook and, and the city life to actually look at, look at Blanche and see her slightly differently. Uh, Blanche talks about Lower Down Page Street, this, this uh, streetcar ride that she's been on. Um, the idea that she transfers to cemeteries and then she gets off at Elysian Fields. So there's this idea of um, death kind of, you know, following Blanche. Um, possibly because it's that southern you know, way of life that, that's dying out. But also perhaps we could see this play as um, Blanche's death or Blanche's escape. You know, is, is this almost Blanche's final uh, judgment here? Um, very, very top of page four, that Blanche says, I'm looking for my sister Stella Dubois, I mean Mrs. Stanley Kowalski. Uh, so we get here um, this really obvious sign through the name of Stella adapting from you know the old southern way of life, the, the French sophistication of the name Dubois to Kowalski, the name signalling um, Stanley's Polish um, nationality. 
could we argue that that's Stella adapting? Could we argue that that's Stella perhaps losing some of her identity? I think Williams invites us initially to think it's Stella being adaptable, whereas Blanche isn't. By the end of the play, I think I think you could you could perhaps argue um, there's another interpretation here. Um, Blanche mentions Belle Reeve to, to Eunice. Eunice says about a quarter of the way down page five, a great big place with white columns. So there's the white again linked with Blanche. And the white columns, again, it's that sophistication, isn't it? It sums Blanche up in that image of the white columns. Um, the, uh, the, the sophistication and the innocence, but the fact that, again, this is built essentially on uh, slavery. And, and we get the image of Stanley pulling Stella down off the white columns. There's that sense that Blanche is, is due a fall. I think the audience almost want to see a fall at this point. I think by the end, Williams rises her back up um, again. Um, we get uh, Blanche at the top of page six saying basically she's got to bathe and, and rest. Uh, she wants to, to turn the light off. She says, I won't be looked at in this merciless glare. <sighs> Again, it's almost meta theatrical, isn't it? You know, the light and the stage at, at this point could, could well be quite harsh. And as it goes on, Williams makes it harsher and harsher. The, the lights are described as lurid. We get the animal noises. But then by the end, it softens as the doctor takes Blanche away. So using plastic theatre, Williams gradually forces us to see the world uh, as Blanche sees it. Um, a great point there at the top of page seven. Blanche says, only Poe, only Mr. Ella, Edgar Allan Poe could imagine this world. Edgar Allan Poe was a pioneer of the Southern Gothic. And Blanche is here really early on mentioning him. Initially, I think the, uh, Williams is encouraging the audience to see Blanche as being ridiculous, being over the top, not adapting to the world. But as it goes on, I think Williams um, forces us to see the world like this. He takes New Orleans, his very realistic city, and makes it something horrific, and makes us uh, take Blanche's view of it, and actually forces us to, to accept this Southern Gothic way of life and, and see Blanche's you know, exit from the stage as being this death, but also this, this kind of freedom. He encourages us, he encourages us to take that very uh, Southern Gothic um, viewpoint there. Um, Blanche says, page eight, a third of the way down, um, daylight never exposed, so total ruin. So again, nice parallelism with the white columns and Blanche now saying she's a ruin. She talks about Stella being plump as a little partridge, putting on weight. It's interesting that Eunice is also described as being overweight. There's that sense that Stella is following Eunice. It adds that idea of circularity in the play. This idea that Stella is almost turning into uh, a Eunice-like figure. She's adaptable, but she's also stuck. Whereas Blanche, yes, she goes mad and can't cope in this world, but in some ways she escapes, perhaps we, we, we could see. Um, Blanche says towards the bottom of page eight, I never had your beautiful self-control. I, I think initially, again, Williams is involved in us to see Stella's self-control as being something really good. She can adapt to the world. By the end of this play, uh, I don't think it is. Stella, remember, ends up lying to herself, believing that Stanley couldn't possibly have raped Blanche. So actually, by the end of the play, Blanche isn't the liar, it's Stella. Blanche isn't seen as a liar if we are going along with her way of seeing the world, if we're following Southern Gothic. It's not lying, it's just a different way of seeing the world. It's Stella who becomes the liar, and I think that's where that's where Williams is, is, is taking us um, with that. Um, halfway down, Williams again uses more well, references the stage in. Blanche says, I don't like a bed that gives much, but there's no door between the two rooms. Will it be decent? A lot of people talk about Stanley and the package of meat early on, showing his masculinity, showing the rape. But I think that's a great way through staging. Williams shows this claustrophobia. He shows this invasion um, of Stanley upon Blanche. It represents what's going on in America, but it also represents his masculine power invading um, on her. Um, what we get um, later on is, is Stella talking about a sexual desire for Stanley. Again, it's a key bit that is talked about a lot. Um, so I don't want to look at that um, too much. I think what is really worth looking at is page 12, where we get this big, ridiculous, over-the-top, slightly melodramatic speech from Blanche about all the deaths um, in the South. Again, initially, it seems ridiculous. She's talking about people blowing up so they won't quite fit in the, the coffin and describing the blood in great detail. But again, this is Southern Gothic. This is essentially a nightmare situation that involves this big focus on decay. And she's talking, of course, about Belle Rev, um, which is this old Southern place, you know, this place of decay and this place of Southern nostalgia. So again, initially, this is something that 
uh, seems ridiculous and doesn't quite seem to fit. By the end of the play, I think we're following Blanche's way of life. Essentially, Blanche is like Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, she's an English teacher, she's a learned woman who sees the world a little bit differently. Gradually, bit by bit, Williams, I think, forces us to see it in her way. At the very end of Blanche's speech, she says to Celeste, where were you in bed with your Polak? Now, you know, it's, it's not a PC way of describing Stanley, but it shows that stark uh, difference between them, doesn't it? Um, Stella adapting to the new world, adapting to this new America of immigration, Blanche focusing on the past, focusing on the decay. Maybe that's why we get cemeteries and Elysian fields. Is Blanche essentially a metaphor for the old South? It's dying out and through this plastic theatre, through this expressionism, Williams kind of allows it to live on. He allows it to live on in the words of people like Edgar Allan Poe as this Southern Gothic thing, uh, just like Blanche can kind of live on as she, as she leaves the stage. Um, and in some ways, perhaps that's 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 better than uh, than than um, New Orleans just sort of carrying on. Um, notice towards the bottom of page thirteen, we get this big stage direction again. The the focus often is on how Stanley sizes people up, but I want to focus on what William says. Uh, it talks about Stanley uh, loves his he has love of good drink and food and games, his car, his radio, everything that he is. Notice those physical items that are all associated with Stanley by Tennessee Williams. Um, Blanche is associated with imagination and these nightmarish situations. Stanley is associated with the real, literal world. So as Williams takes us more and more into plastic theatre, of course we're going to sympathise with Blanche. Stanley belongs in the real world. Blanche belongs in this expressionistic, imaginative world. That's where Williams takes us to go. I think by the end of the play, he's seeing Blanche's madness as a kind of victory. She goes off into her own head. She goes off into her own imagination. She's not forced to be in this literal world. Stella's been dragged down off the column. She comes down the fire, uh, the fire escape steps. Blanche goes up. Blanche looks at the sky and says, I want to take a rocket up there. I think Williams encourages us to, to see that, that, that that's what's happened, basically, um, in this scene. Um, right at the end of the, the scene, um, towards, the, well, towards the, the end of it on, on page 15, um, Blanche talks very, very briefly about uh, Alan Gray, the boy, the boy who died, and then she says, I'm afraid I'm going to be sick. So we see this very melodramatic scene, but again, it's a physical frailty. Um, Alan Gray, Blanche, both physically frail, Alan obviously killed himself. But what unites Alan and, and Blanche is that imagination, that's what she loved about him. And there's that sense, perhaps uh, foreshadowed right at the start of the play, that eventually that's where Blanche goes, you know, with Alan in her imagination, away from the literal world, uh, up to him. So I think that they're the bits that I'd maybe look at that are less obvious, that are more about Williams, more about his techniques and his stage directions, that might perhaps allow you to, to go to a higher level with some of your analysis.